Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ray. I am a detransition male, and today we are going to be talking about autogynophilia and post nut clarity and why the feeling of post nut clarity changing your feelings about transitioning or being a woman or something like this is pretty much proof positive and classic autogynophilia. So if you experience post nut clarity and then you have different feelings in regards to your desire to be a woman or identify as a woman, then that is pretty clear evidence for you being AGP or having some sort of AGP. So I'm going to be um, looking at a Reddit thread here that was posted recently in the M to F uh, subreddit. So the title of this thread is post not clarity makes me feel disgusting being becoming a woman. Uh, this person says, I apologize for this weird question, but it has been bugging me since I know I am trans. I haven't transitioned yet, neither HRT nor any surgery. I try not to do the thing, uh, masturbate. I try not to masturbate because I dislike my penis, but sometimes it just has to be released. Every post not clarity I have, I feel disgusted with me transitioning, disgusted for what I did, and disgusted for possibly thinking I could be a woman. I dislike this a lot because it makes me feel so insecure in my transitioning that it's just a sexual fantasy and not something to better my life. It makes me doubt it all. Does anyone else have this experience? Is my post not clarity right in thinking it's just a fantasy? So... This is why I talk about AGP, autogynophilia, on my channel so much, because this person is just confused about what they are experiencing. They are confused about what is the actual psychological, neurological phenomenon underlying their desire to become a woman. And they're going to post this question in the subreddit and they're not going to get any useful answers because everyone thinks that AGP is this debunked thing, even though every single day, all over Reddit, people are constantly sharing stories that fit into the psychological model of AGP because this is what AGP predicts. This is what AGP is all about. It is saying that the desire to become a woman has its origins in the erotic. When you think about becoming a woman, it triggers arousal in some way or another. And then when you have an orgasm, that psychosexual energy, that psychosexual libido, it gets diminished. It goes away. And then that desire, <laughs> and then the desire goes away as well. So the reason why it goes as way is because that psychosexual energy, when it builds up, it builds up and it, it, it intensifies the desire to become a woman. And so when you release the psychosexual energy through a orgasm, then obviously the sort of psychological phenomenon that corresponds with that psychosexual energy, it also disappears, which is why this is very common to the AGP experience. This is why AGPs go through what's called a purge binge cycle. They sort of binge the AGP feelings. They, you know, they're they're horny, you know, they're they're feeling this, and then, you know, they start watching, you know, pornography, sissy porn, trans porn, something like this. And then, you know, they go on Amazon, they buy a bunch of clothing, they, you know, they uh you know, get into the cycle, it becomes a, a huge thing. They start fantasizing about, you know, being a woman, becoming a woman, you know, they, they, it, it builds up this psychosexual fantasy. And then, um, you know, and then they orgasm, have post not clarity, and then they start uh, purging, aka they just, you know, they throw away all their clothes. They say, oh, like, I'm just a pervert. I'm like never going to do this again. And people go through these binge purge cycles um, all the time. And eventually the frequency or the cycling becomes different. So the the sort of uh, time in between the, the binge purge cycles becomes tighter and tighter, tighter and tighter such that it becomes a process of escalation. 
such that at first you could like, you know, do the, the binge process over the course of like three months. And it, you know, it wasn't that intense, but you know, and, and, but then, you know, you would like purge after like three months or whatever, but then later it becomes tighter and tighter and tighter such that, you know, after you have the post nut clarity, the desire comes raging back full blown, you know, like the next day or the next week or, or something like this. And so eventually the sort of like a distinction between binging and purging um, goes away and it becomes, it sort of takes over. And so you sort of, and that's when you sort of like uh, take the plunge and, and you start to um, take on the full blown I, 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 I identity and you transition, you get hormones. And so sort of you're not, you, you become more normalized because the more you engage in it, it, the more normalized it becomes because you become habituated to the stimulus. And, and when you become habituated to the stimulus, it requires a sort of greater, a greater stimulus, or, you know, it just becomes, it like loses its erotic because part of the erotic is the sort of novelty and to taboo aspect of this, but this doesn't negate the AGP theory because the AGP theory is just about the ideological origins or the causal origins about like, where is the origin of this desire? Um, okay. So that's sort of my response to just reading this um, thread. So let's see what people have to say. Top voted comment. How would you feel if you suddenly woke up as the opposite gender, horny, relieved, excited, disgusted, ignore post not clarity for a second and just think about it. Relieved and excited, I'm certain that would be the case. I'd most likely stare at myself in the mirror for a good hour. <laughs> that is a very AGP thing to say. Um, because right now, as they're typing this, they probably are not you know, experiencing post-nut clarity. So they're in the binging phase of the, of the cycle. So when you're in the binging phase of the cycle, you know, and, and you're asking these questions like, oh, how would you how, how would you feel if you suddenly woke up as the opposite gender? Then you're going to give a positive answer to that because you're in the binging process of the cycle. So this is why things like the button test are so misleading because the button test is, oh, if you could press a button and magically turn yourself into a the opposite gender, would you press that button? And they say that, oh, if you press that button, that proves you have gender dysphoria, and therefore it proves your gender identity is valid, which proves that you're really a woman. And therefore, if you're really a woman, the origin of your fantasy or the origin of that dysphoria cannot be rooted in the ironic, which is supposed to be a disproof of the theory of autogynophilia. Well, the autogynophilia can motivate the fantasy of wanting to become the opposite gender during the binging phase of the cycle. So the AGP, the underlying autogynophilia, can motivate you to press the button. Um, it, but when you sort of experience that post-nut clarity, when the psychosocial, um, you know, energy gets released, then in that moment, you don't want to press the button. You want to just go back to, you know, being a regular guy. And that is a very common experience for trans women who are heterosexual, bisexual, or asexual, AKA the AGP type of trans woman. Um, so this person says, that's a good way to tell. I also started down my path of understanding by asking myself the question, if you had the ability to create your body like a video game character, what would it look like? And I answered that it would look a lot more feminine than I am. Well, that is compatible with AGP because AGP is a psychosexual motivation and attraction to the idea of having a more feminine body, um, to, to be more feminine. Um, so that is not a disproof of the theory of autogynophilia. Um, let's see. Uh, it is completely understandable to feel dysphoria over your genitals and the act of masturbation as someone with gender dysphoria. It's not uncommon. On top of that, you've likely grown up in a culture that taught you to feel ashamed for masturbating, even though doing things that feel good to your body is normal, which includes masturbation. Um, even prepubescent children masturbate and sex hormones, especially testosterone, make people feel more sexually aroused. So after puberty starts, almost everyone is going to feel the urge to masturbate sometimes. However, the feelings of shame and disgust you experience after masturbating is not ex actually what is colloquially known as post-nut clarity. People tend to conflate the two, but the two are not the same. 
if anything, what you're describing is more like postcoital dysphoria. Okay, they're just making things up. That's not like a real thing. That's not that's not that's not in the DSM. <laughs> you're just ashamed of yourself for masturbating. And you're conflating the shame with how you feel about your gender because you've also grown up in a culture that denotes masturbating with a penis as a masculine activity. No, that's not actually what is the true explanation because there are plenty of trans women who don't have bottom dysphoria. There are trans women who are what's called autogynoandromorphophiliacs, which is where they, their desire, when they imagine becoming a woman, they don't actually imagine having a vagina and becoming female. They, they imagine themselves as a transsexual woman, aka a woman with a chick, a, a chick with a dick, basically, a female. <laughs> they, they imagine themselves with breasts and, and, and penis. That, that is their ideal body. That is called autogynoandromorphophilia. That is very common in the trans women experience, which is why most trans women don't actually want to get bottom surgery and why most trans women do not get bottom surgery. So you cannot just explain this purely in terms of dysphoria in regards to the, the penis because a lot of trans women don't have dysphoria about, about the penis. Um, so let's just pretend for a moment that all the shame and dysphoria stuff doesn't exist and you're actually experiencing post not clarity, but the but still feeling this well. Well, that clarity is the result of hormones being released during and after your orgasm. Well, that, that's just psychological mumbo jumbo. <laughs> that's not actually like, that's not actually like, there's no scientific ev ev evidence to that. It's not your normal state of being. It's when you're flushed with various psychoactive sex hormones. No, it, it's... It's essentially the opposite because the AGP says that the psychosexual energy, the erotic component of the fantasy or the desire to become a woman, that is when you're flushed with a libidinous energy. That is when you're highly sexually motivated. And after post not clarity, you actually have a release of your desire for sexuality. You have released from the hold that your sexuality has on you, which is why after post not clarity, a lot of people go, they do things that are not sexual. They, you know, go play video games or they read a book or they engage in a hobby or they, you know, do some self-improvement or self-development or something. And they, so they sort of like use the, the masturbation in order to release themselves from the sexual energy. So it's actually the sexual energy prior to the post not clarity that is driving the phenomenon, which is why AGP is a psychosexual phenomenon. And when you have post not clarity, it's not that you're like, you know, filled up with these like orgasm hormones or whatever. And that's like, you know, confusing you from your normal state. No, the like when the that moment of post not clarity is when you are like absent of your sexual absent of your sexual energy and because in that moment of being absent of sexual energy you don't want to be a woman that is proof positive for the fact that your desire to be a woman is motiv motivated by the sexual energy but you know who doesn't feel this <laughs> is the homosexual transsexuals the homosexual transsexuals aka the trans women who are exclusively attracted to men, they do not feel this. This is exclusively a phenomenon for the heterosexual, bisexual, and asexual trans women. But your, your homosexual, transsexual does not experience all this stuff. Um, so they're saying that's not post not clarity, you're just experiencing sexual shame. Well, the sexual shame is part and parcel of the AGP. Sexual shame is built into the AGP experience. So this, this is not a contradiction of, of AGP because that shame process is also what motivates the binging and the purging cycles. Um, before HIT, while I was still questioning, I had a pretty hor terrible porn masturbation addiction and, and, and post not clarity. I'd feel terrible that I was a perv for wanting to be the woman in the video or that I was fetishizing these real people for, for my own gratification. Okay, so they're they're fetishizing trans people. So they're watching trans pornography, sissy porn or something, and they're sort of fetishizing trans people. That's autogynoangiomorphophilia, which is the sexual desire to be a transsexual woman. Um so this is pro probably referring to sissy porn, probably referring to trans porn, um, and that the disgust and envy. So that so that envy thing is a huge aspect of, of like 
of like uh, of uh, uh, auto gynophilia, you desire the the trans woman, the transsexual woman, but you're envious of the transsexual woman, which is like part of the you know the like age the AGP experience. Um, so this this whole thread is just a bunch of people confirming AGP as a legitimate theory. And yet supposedly AGP is like debunked, pseudoscientific, transphobic, even though literally almost every single thread in the M to F subreddit confirms the model of AGP, but they're just all in denial because they want to say that the ultimate cause of all this is your is some sort of latent repressed gender identity. Latent repressed gender identity is not the cause of the psychosexual energy. The gender identity is a downstream product of the psychosexual process, which generates the narrative self of being a woman, which is a product of the psychosexual fantasy. It is the psychosexual process which generates the identification process of coming to form an identity of yourself as a trans woman. That is what actually motivates the development of gender dysphoria. That is what develops the, the, the hatred of one's body is the psychosexual process, which is being envious of the female body, which is having desire for the female body, but also envy of the female body, wanting to embody the thing that you're aroused by. It, it's, it's, it's sexual attraction to the idea of becoming the thing that you desire, which is classic autosexuality which is the, the nature of autogynophilia. Um, I now, one and a half years of HRT, struggle with the same thing. The way, it was, the, the way it was explained to me was alone time is one of the only times we get to really let ourselves go. We have the freedom to just be. Post-nut clarity is like a rush back into everyday life that can often be overwhelming when there are parts we are or have repressed. For me, continuing to transition really helped. I knew I was trans, but seeing how much better I felt even when I wasn't having alone time confirmed my doubts. Yes, so this is explained by the sort of uh, fact that autogynophilia, this psychosexual phenomenon, is not purely erotic. There is also a romantic component to this. So it's not purely fetishistic, which is one of the big... Um, pieces of misinformation in regards to autogynophilia, there is a romantic side of this as well, such that you develop a romantic attachment to the idea of, of, of oneself. You build up this narrative self, this second self, this feminine self. You develop an alter ego, an alter identity, and you, and you come to identify with this alter ego. You identify with this second self, this, this feminine persona that you have constructed, and you, you essentially fall in love with that second self. You fall in love with that feminine self. And so that romantic process like remains even through the process of normalization. So the so if you start cross-dressing every single day, if if you start cross-dressing full time, you will eventually develop a habituation to the stimuli such that wearing that clothing does not sort of psychically, psychosexually arouse you to the same extent because you've become habituated to that phenomenon. But the romantic attachment to the idea of oneself as a woman sticks with you. And that is why even though once you go on HRT and it kills your libido, so you have less of that explicit erotic uh, arousal, you nevertheless maintain that narrative self that was constructed during the original psychosexual development. Um, it freaked me out the first time it happened, but it seems to have stopped now. I don't know. I think for me, the post on clarity was mostly allowing the fear to come out and be like, whoa, your transition is scary. Maybe you shouldn't do it. Um, I mean, this is the, the, the fact that so many people resonate with this story just goes to show that autogonophilia is the predominant motivator in a uh, male to female transition. Like according to the research that people like Phil Illy have done or looked at, um, roughly 80% of male to female transsexualism in the Western world is motivated by autogynophilia and the rest of it is motivated by homosexual transsexualism. 
you're not alone. Keep digging deep and exploring. Um, okay, well, that's not helpful. <laughs> So the great thing about HRT is post note clarity does not happen after a while. The climax changes in two. So what, what they're basically saying is that the HRT will kill your libido. And thus, because it kills your libido, that psychosexual energy is um, sort of reduced. But that doesn't negate the theory of autogonophilia because autogonophilia is more about the origins of the phenomenon. It is about where does it come from? It comes from the psychosexual process. And then once you go on HRT, it's a way to alleviate the sort of um, the explicit psychosexual process, but it, it, it doesn't totally get rid of it. It's just that that psychosexual energy gets sublimated into the identification process such that you now take on this whole feminine persona. You build up this social identity. You sort of, you know, fall in love with this idea of yourself as a woman. You start, you know, you know, wanting to use she, her pronouns, you change your legal name, you, you change your, your, the way you talk, the way you dress, the way you act, it becomes a total, your total persona gets taken up into this as a result of the elaboration, the escalation of the psychosexual process, but it is a evolution of that process. It's not that the autogynophilia ever goes away. It, it just gets sublimated into a more romantic attachment to the idea rather than an, an explicit erotic process because the HRT kills, it takes the edge off the, the, um, the like explicit arousal aspect because your libido has been nuked by the HRT. Um, and also the fact that you're stimulating yourself with these things, you're cross-dressing every single day, um, you're sort of living this life as a woman every, every single day, you get habituated to the stimulus. And so that erotic component goes away. Um, it certainly, certainly doesn't help my self-doubt. I mean, why would a woman want to masturbate with their penis over the excitement of possibly being a woman? <laughs> Yeah, woman wouldn't a woman wouldn't want to do that, which is why you're not a woman. You are a male who has a GP, which led to the development of a identity as a woman. It creates a desire to be a woman, but having a desire to be something does not make you that something. Like a trans woman is not a woman; it is a male who has the psychosexual fantasy. To, which develops gender dysphoria, which leads to hatred of the body in order to satisfy that psychosexual impulse. Now, I'm not saying that I'm like that, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that like transition and hormones and all this stuff ca cannot be or should not be like offered as a treatment modality for people who have AGP that is, that is so intense that it comes to destroy their lives or prevent proper psycho um, social functioning. But what I am doing with my videos is I'm trying to educate people because people are ignorant of the, uh, of the truth. People don't know the actual reason underlying their feelings. They sort of get uh, taken in by this gender identity ideology that says that the underlying rationale behind all of this is some repressed, unfalsifiable gender identity that is sort of like there that you're born with, that you're just like born with this inner gender identity, this inner self concept. But no, the self concept is not the origins of the phenomenon. The self concept is a downstream product of the psychosexual energy. The psychosexual energy is the is the more fundamental phenomenon. I drive myself crazy with the circular thinking sometimes. The thing is, I obviously get excited about the prospect of being a woman, and unfortunately, excitement like that manifests itself the only way it can by making my penis erect and my enjoying it. Okay, that's it's that's AGP. Oh, but AGP is a transphobic theory. AGP has been debunked. AGP is like pseudoscience. Well, no, <laughs> AGP is a description of this phenomenon. 
An AGP is a recognition of the fact that homosexual transsexuals do not experience this. The only trans women who experience this are the heterosexuals, the bisexuals, and the asexuals. Homosexual trans women do not experience this. That is the theory. It is not disproven. It is not pseudoscience. It is not falsified. It is not debunked. It is a description of this process that is being articulated in literally every single Reddit thread on, on here, um, which is, drives me crazy because people are just ignorant of what's actually going on, even though if they actually understood it, they would truly understand themselves. And by truly understanding themselves and understanding the origins of this phenomenon, they'd have more self-awareness and they'd be able to give actual informed consent. Because I do not think that it is proper to go on these hormones to take these life-altering, permanent, irreversible you know, treatments without having an actual understanding of your disease and where it comes from. Like, like it's, it's like taking a cancer drug and not knowing the type of cancer you have. You, 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 you have to understand the origins of the thing you're trying to treat. Um, the thing you've got to realize is that there's a separation between what your average cis guy might be thinking and what you're thinking. I'm watching the women in porn taking and writing and I'm imagining myself in those positions. What's it like to feel a rock hard penis being thrust into a space I don't have? I need to know. Is this guy imagining himself doing the giving and being written on and so on? Okay. So this is why the whole distinction between like cis and trans is like not helpful. The actual distinction that needs to be made is between a AGP male and a non AGP male. But <laughs> like saying that like, cis guys don't experience this is not helpful because you can be an agp male you can be a self-aware agp male who doesn't transition who doesn't take on a trans identity it it, it it is not necessary to take on the trans identity to think of yourself oh i'm actually a woman i'm really a woman you don't you don't have to take on the trappings of gender identity ideology in order to acknowledge that you have AGP and you have these feelings. This is why saying, oh, a cis guy would never think this. Well, you can be a guy who doesn't have a trans identity, who is self-aware of themselves as AGP and recognizes that they have these same fantasies and these same desires, and they just might not want to transition. But you know, that doesn't make them cis because that cis trans distinction is, is like not a legitimate distinction. It doesn't actually get at the heart of the phenomenon, which is autogynophilia. Um, okay. So that is enough of <laughs> that thread. I mean, there's more to talk about here, but like, I don't know. It's just to me, like what bothers me is that people are being misled that they're being confused by the gender identity theory when they need to be understanding the actual root cause of their desires. And if they understood the actual root cause of the, of their desires, they'd be so much more aware of what's going on. And that'd be so much helpful. Like when I learned about AGP and truly accepted that, like, this is the actual like explanation of like why I transitioned, because when I transitioned, I didn't know this. I didn't know what was behind the, my feelings. Like, but, but now, I, you know, eight years later, nine years later, I actually understand like what drove me to that process. And I wish that I knew what I knew now because I might have made a different decision. Because going on hormones is not some like benign thing. It has serious health consequences. And you need to be aware of that. And you have to decide whether these AG, AGP feelings are so intense as to warrant the, the risk of taking on these health ramifications that come with taking cross-sex hormones, which your body was not designed to handle. Okay, so that's it for this video. Take care. God bless. Bye-bye.